looking at this example, we have another fraction, and there is a radical in the denominator. So you might be thinking right away that we want to rationalize the denominator. But I don't want to make that my very first move of a problem. I want to make sure that I don't finish a problem with a radical in the denominator, but my first thoughts are the other sorts of simplifying. This fraction, we want to see that we have one term in the numerator and one term in the denominator. Remember, our terms are separated by adds and subtracts, so an outside number with an inside number, we're not going to multiply or try to do operations on those two together, but they definitely work together as part of a single term. And that's going to be an important idea for us to uh, keep an eye out for. Can we do any simplifying? And there are two different kinds of simplifying that, that we want to think about with these sorts of problems. We want to think about simplifying the radicals and simplifying the fraction. Simplifying the fraction would be us looking at 5 over 14. Can we simplify that fraction? No. Still thinking about simplifying just the fraction, we'd look at a 15 over 98. And we can do that because they're both in a radical, so we can think about is there any number that will divide evenly from both of those? And there isn't, so we can't do any simplifying of the fraction. But can we do simplifying of any of the radicals? Now we're looking individually at each of these radicals. Can we simplify radical 15? Well, the factors in there are just 1, 3, and 1, 5. So no simplifying there. But 98, if we start to break this number down into factors, we'll see a radical 2 and of radical 49. So there's a nice perfect square, a number that we can simplify into 7. Now, once we've simplified that, apply it to any number that was already outside of the radical, that 14. So our denominator is 98. That's the product of 7 with 14. The radical 2, we couldn't simplify, so it remains in the radical, and it's in the denominator. The 5, radical 15, we couldn't simplify. We're bringing that over still in the numerator. So we thought about those two types of simplifying first. There's nothing left we can do in terms of that type of simplifying radicals or fraction. So now we think rationalize the denominator to finish this one up. We don't want to end a problem with a radical in the denominator. We need to clear that with another radical too. So our steps for rationalizing the denominator, if we have just one term down here, then we find the radical and double it up. Multiply another radical two in there and let's let's do our multiplication. So up top, the radical 2 we can multiply to the radical 15 and end up with radical 30. The 5 outside of the radical has to stay outside of the radical. No other numbers from the numerator that are outside of the radical to multiply with that 5. Denominator, we have a 98. Now the radical 2 times radical 2 is becoming just 2 outside of the radical. We needed to do 2 times 98 gives us 196. Now remember, we're not saying that's 2 times 2 is 4. It would be a 4 still in the radical that we simplify to a nice 2 outside of the radical. So we want to get an I for two radicals that are the same multiplied together. Basically would be that number outside of a radical, 1, 2. So we have 98 times a single 2 to equal the 196. And we would take a look at, can we do any simplifying 5 over 196? We cannot. And the radical we cannot simplify anymore, so we're done with that one. Let's look at this example to emphasize this idea about looking for the other types of simplifying first. Here's a problem. It's not too different from this example. 6 radical 15 over 4 radical 60. If I was to jump right in and start trying to rationalize the denominator, I'm setting myself up for several steps that really are not necessary. If I think about simplifying the fraction first, 6 over 4, we can do a simplify there. That's a fraction 3 over 2. Now still thinking about fraction, how about 15 over 60? We can simplify that. 1 fourth. Now those were both in a radical, so 1 fourth still needs to be in a radical. But what do we know about radical 1 is 1. 
So this is just a 3 times 1 equals 3. Denominator, radical 4 is 2. We have 2 times 2. We ended up not even having radicals from simplifying just the fraction. So think of the fractional simplifying first, then simplify the radicals. And if we still have 1 in the denominator after all that, then we rationalize. And after we do that, you'll still want to take another check for any simplifying we might do. Here are two problems for you to try. So pause the video, work through these two. We're thinking about rationalizing the denominator and all the other simplifying we have to think about. And once you've gone through those, restart the video and we'll go through the answers. Now this first problem, 12 over 5 radical 2, can I simplify the fraction? How about 12 over 5? Cannot. And there's no radical to try to work with this radical 2. That leaves us with our last choice, rationalize the denominator. Because we see a radical 2, we're choosing to multiply by another radical 2. Top and bottom, we always have to do the same thing to numerator and denominator. This multiplication in the numerator, 12 times radical 2, an outside with an inside, we sh should not multiply those together. It must just stay 12 radical 2. What happened in the denominator? Radical 2 with another radical 2 becomes just 2 outside of the radical, and that 2 times 5 equals 10. So that's what we've said. That pair of radicals is just uh, 1 2 times the 5 makes 10. After rationalizing the denominator, you still need to look for any other simplifying that might have popped up that we can do, like that 12 over 10. Our outside numbers initially we could not do any simplifying, but after rationalizing the denominator, we can, and that can happen pretty often, so be on the lookout for that. 12 over 10. We can simplify that. I'm going to go for the prime factors this time. 12, 2, 2, 3, 10, 2 times 5. We're spotting the 2's we can cancel. That will leave us with 2 times 3, 6, radical 2 over 5. And we know we're finished because, number 1, the fraction cannot be simplified further. 6 over 5, we can't. Number 2, the radical cannot be simplified further. This radical 2 cannot be simplified. We don't have any pairs of factors in there. And finally, we don't have any radical in the denominator, so we're in the clear there. So that's how we know this problem is finished. Oh, this problem. So I threw one at you that had variables, even though we haven't looked at any examples yet. But our steps are going to be exactly the same. Thinking about simplifying the fraction, there's nothing we can do. This radical y, we cannot simplify that either. We're ready to rationalize the denominator. Seeing the radical y, we choose another radical y to multiply to denominator and numerator. In the numerator, we cannot put these together, the 4x staying outside of the radical, the y staying inside of the radical. In the denominator, radical y with another radical y is giving us this y outside of the radical. A last look for any canceling can we do. Well, the y's are catching my eye, but we should know not to go there. This y is in the radical, this one is out of the radical. They're not available for canceling each other. There's nothing outside of the radical in terms of a y that can cancel with that y, and no 4 or x or any other even number to work with. So this problem is finished.